podcast number eight, uh, Beyond the Dirt. My guest today is a longtime local legend here in the motorsports world. And he's on the wall of fame up here at Happy Jacks. And I want to welcome Newt Barswaite to the uh, podcast today. And uh, my first question is, Newt, uh, how long have you been in the motorsports world and uh, all the events you did, how many years, what made you start? I don't know, just ever since I was a kid, I just like cars. I mean, it's like fishing or golf or anything else. It just, it gets in your blood, I guess. Worse than drugs, I suppose. <laughs> you just get hung up on it, and you can't get away from it. And I love it, and I always have, and it's been a lot of fun. Well, how old was you when you first started, kind of, when you got really into it? Well, my first car, my very first car was 55 Chevy two-door coast, so time I had mine. Well, actually, before I had my driver's license, so ever since I was a kid. And you had, a, we're going to talk about that later, but you had a good, did you have a good teacher to teach you how to work on the Well, engine? I just, uh, yeah, some of the, maybe some guys a little older than I am let me hang around, and, you know, they were kind of into it, and, I don't know, they just kind of took me in and helped me out because I had the love of it or the like of it, whatever, and just being around them guys just added fuel to the fire and it just been that way ever since. Ah, uh, you've been in the dirt dirt track racing for a long time too. Well, I actually, as far as actually racing, it's been quite a while. I, uh, had a old factory stock car and uh, drove a, a, a modified time or two, and, but that's been far back, so far back that, uh, well, when I was racing the old factory stock car, I was starting a family, so, you know, kind of had to give it up and move on, raise kids, pay bills. <laughs> you, you, did you race in Caney, Kansas? Yes, yeah. sir, about every Saturday night. You know, there's a lot. I kind of, kind of had the feeling if I wasn't there, they couldn't run. You know, we talked to, we had a guy here on the podcast here a while back, you know, he raced the Canyon all the time, you know. And uh, well, he, he probably, he might know me. You might know him. Uh, is it the Benning Boys? Who? Benning? Benning? No. Benning Boys? No. They're probably quite well, a bit younger than I am, but they, they they raced quite a bit back in them days. and. and uh, so we raced down at the uh, Dewey, Oklahoma at the old Lakeside Speedway, uh, Humboldt, run up there some, Yates Center, ran out there a little bit. Of course, uh, Humboldt and Caney's the only two left, the others are gone. So. I'm kind of curious, so I, I didn't even ask him this, because I don't know, I ain't real familiar with dirt car racing, but how many laps is there in dirt car racing? Uh, you run a heat race and they're like eight, ten laps, uh, and then the feature can run anywhere from, well, depending on what kind of a show it is, they can run anywhere from 20 to, I've seen some of them late model cars run 50, 60 laps. Wow. Wow. Now, late model cars anymore, they're running like 900 horsepower. They're up there. They're fast cars. Huh. Okay, that made me think of something when we talk about dirt car. Ford or Chevy, man? I run both, drove both. You know, I, 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 I just love them all. Well, Kim was talking about, he took, and uh, I can't really remember, he took a, bought a Ford and put Chevy parts in it. Something like mm -hmm. that, you know, well, and his dirt car. And that would depend on what it is, you know. Mm -hmm. About everybody, if they're not running late models, probably runs that nine inch Ford style rear end because they just they're just tough rear ends. Of course, now anymore there's companies that's actually manufactured. Well, I sort of run my mini rod Ford rear end. Uh, I run a Ford rear end. Yeah, nine inch. Yeah, nine inch Ford. Yeah, nine inch Ford. yeah. And, and there's been, well, matter of fact, one of these cars sitting in here, I think it's got a nine inch yeah. Ford rear end in it, uh, you know, so. They, They've been around since mid fifties, and they're getting hard to find. Yeah, they're getting real hard. I've got one. I, in fact, I've got one out of a fifty-seven, fifty-eight, fifty-nine. Was all a little bit narrow, and 
and don't be telling too many people that well, they'll be trying to tell <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, they're getting... They're getting hard to find. Yeah. They're getting hard to find. Like a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Every, the junk price is up and everybody yeah, wants to have. Yeah, and that's for there's a lot of truth to that. Yeah. It's a sad deal. That, and in my world, in, in my world, you know, or I used to be in the horse world, you know, it just irritates me to death to go up to scrapyard yes. and see a load of antique machinery coming in, you yep. know, and that's, they don't realize what that's yep. worth, yep. you know. They're just selling it for junk price, you know. It, it's sad to see that in our world today. You it know? is. It it's is. all about the money. And if you don't, if you don't appreciate that kind of stuff, I guess it just don't mean anything. Yeah, it don't, you know. Uh, I know that I've talked to several guys about this, and I know you, your name's come up to the conversation at the coffee table here in the restaurant. Uh, you've built a lot of cars over the years, and you've helped a lot of people out with their really? motors and stuff like that. I, I enjoy, you know, helping guys if I can. It's just, well, it's just all part of the deal. I, I guess it's a maybe kind of a brotherhood, maybe you call it, I don't know. It's, you get finished one the other day. Uh, yeah, stuff. I helped a guy put a seven hundred R four and sixty eight Chevy pickup. Yeah. So. I've got a lift and transmission jack and he needed to get it done, so I said, Well, let's just get it over and do it. So, uh, give me something to do. <laughs> and we're gonna get into that when we go to the shop and, and check out the uh, the rat rod and stuff that you just built not too long ago. But uh, I know he's a I know Nuke's a good body man. Uh, like when you chop your hood on your, uh, chopped your calf down oh. on your, on your, on how you choked me yesterday, how yeah. you blended all that in and everything, and, and uh, real good, real good body man, uh, built a lot of engines over the years and stuff like that. All right, we're going to break for a commercial break and uh, we'll be right back. Good afternoon, I want to welcome you to Happy Jack's Foods, home of Beyond the Dirt Pulling pod Podcast. Come and see us, try out our good food. While you're here at Happy Jack's enjoying the food, come on inside and check out the automotive memorabilia we have, and along with my new oil tanker. Come on by and see us. Hey, thanks again for Happy Jack's here in Columbus, Kansas, uh, for letting us come in here and do the podcast, the home of Beyond the Dirt podcast. Also, uh, we've got a showroom in here, you know, and, and uh, you can come in and eat and check out either race cars or pulling tractors or, or whatever. I think we're getting ready to change out the, uh, the race cars. Uh, maybe this afternoon we're gonna bring in some pulling tractors here, some uh, garden tractors. We're gonna bring a motorcycle tractor in, V8 mini rods. I've uh, been telling you about the April the 15th. We're gonna have a car, truck, and tractor show here in Columbus, Kansas. The address is 308. Southeast Clump Avenue, 308 Southeast Avenue up here in Columbus, Kansas. We're going to have a uh, show of cars, tractors, and trucks that day. Uh, I'm in charge of the tractors uh, stuff, so you'll have to get with Jack, uh, get a hold of Jack if you're interested in bringing a car or a truck. But anything pulling wise, is I'm in charge of that. And uh, there'll be going to be a an entry fee, and that's going to kind of that's kind of scared some people on Facebook. Uh, the entry fee is a donation. Uh, the donation, I don't care if you give two dollars, five. You know, we talked about it: two dollars, five dollars, ten dollars, hundred dollars. But the donation is for a good cause. It's going to Dream Big Little One. It's a kids program here in Columbus. Uh, help out the young kids, and uh, so that's where your money's going to go. Uh, there's going to be a lot of good food for the day. Uh, there's going to be a live band, Marty Bush and Natalie Prouser. Uh, Prouser, Prouser, excuse me, Natalie Prouser. She's, they're both Columbus, Kansas people that's gone on into the music world and they're doing pretty good. They're going to play from 11 o'clock to 1, 1 o'clock in the afternoon and then there's going to be another session at 7 to 9, which I hear is going to be a street dance out here in the parking lot. So seven to nine to listen to the band. Uh, on the awards for the tractors, the pulling tractor stuff, we've come down to nine awards. We're gonna give away farthest traveled person, best to show mini rod, most unique pulling ride. That includes, that will include either a pulling tractor, a big pulling tractor, a pulling truck, 
or a garden tractor. Uh, we're gonna have best to show garden uh, garden pulling tractor, best to show uh, big pulling tractor, best to show pulling truck, best to show antique tractor, best to show motorcycle tractor, and then we're gonna do an award where uh, there's probably gonna be a lot of people here. We'll have the uh, people's choice for all the pullers. Somebody will go home with that award. So, so again, thank the Happy Jacks. We we'll hope we'll see everybody on April 15th. If you're interested, contact me on Facebook, Tractor Pulling with GZ on Facebook, and I can give you more information. So, about that. So, all right. Our next little question here we got. Uh, we're going to talk about is: uh, Do you think our generation in what we learn? As old school, or you might say we're old school, yeah. you know, about the car motors, you know, the engines, the overall general and, and overall general work ethics that we've had, you know, in life. Uh, you think trade school is a very important thing? Yes, sir. I think it's important. Uh, I, I, I really do because, <clears throat> say for instance, college. College is a great thing and it's for people it's for some people but it's not for everybody that's true you know college is i guess a brain thing and trade school is a hand thing and there's just people that are just hands-on that's the way it is you know everybody's got their own thing and yeah i i think trade school is a super good thing i do and you and me has been in the line of work for a long time the same line of work the maintenance field yeah and stuff, you know, and I run across a lot of people, you know, I mean, a lot of phone calls yep. for my business yep. to do this, and they say there ain't hardly anybody around here, ain't nobody to do that. Either. Yeah. You know, so I encourage the young crowd, uh, even in, you know, in the motor world, uh, you know, the, the motorsport stuff, you know, uh, pick up and learn that information, you know, and get off the phone, you know, get off the, yeah. You know, and, and we're not saying nothing bad about the gen younger generation, but you know, because no, they're, they're they're the ones that's going to replace. Them. Yeah, they're they're going to replace. You know, we, just, you know. we need to encourage yeah. encourage them to. They may not necessarily like cars. They may not necessarily like tractors, but find what you like to do. Yes, find what you and and you know I, I took and preached this a lot. Of course, you know we're old. A lot of younger kids don't like listening to this. You know, but it's like you were saying earlier. You know. Uh, you see somebody working on a motor or uh, an engine on a car, tractor, whatever. Hey, pull up a chair and watch them. That's where you know that's where Newt's learned from. You know, and, and Newt's built some some mighty good engines in his days and, and stuff. You know, and, and the body work and, and pay attention. So that leads me to this 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 question. I know I have Scott Gregor on here. You he know, the owner of these race cars and stuff and. You know, they tune in on the computer now, the speed, the time, yeah. and all yeah. that stuff. What's your feelings about the new electronics? Uh, it, it's a great thing. I mean, technology, technology doesn't go backwards. And, I mean, even in the, in the pro graduation world, the funny cars, the, the top fuel cars, they're all using it. Cars are going faster. Uh, me, I'm, I'm kind of, I guess I'm kind of the kind of guy that take a distributor and turn it a little bit and, and listen to it. Yeah. Kind of dial it in. Yeah. Dial it in. Uh, yeah. it, it, it's a good thing, and it's here. It's here to stay. It's not going. The electronics, the technology, is not going anywhere. It's, it's only going to go forward. Yeah. And, and what I'm seeing in the tractor pulling world, and. Uh, and I'm all for, I'm all for the new technology. It's hard to get used to. Yeah. But, you know, we got a lot of these guys old school. Yeah. You know, the old school, like turning the distributor, yeah. you know, listening to Justin the carburetor and stuff, you know. And and, and the new technology is coming. We're just going to have to face it. Yeah. We're just yeah. going to have to face it. News in and all you know, the, you know, know, we're just going to have to, way, we're just have to go start going with the new technology, you know, so. But, and it's going to be hard to do, you know, but uh, I think later on uh, down the road, we're just going to have to say, okay, you know, 
new technology is yeah. new technology. Yep, exactly. You know, we're going to keep doing things, you know, so. Uh, we're going to go to shop and uh, check out Newt's uh, rat rod he gets built and uh, come back and talk about that. And uh, we're going to go down there and check all that out and listen and see what Newt has to say. Well, got a 1946 Ford pickup. Got the old cab out of a pasture down southeast of Joplin. And uh, we're going home. Got a home built frame for it, cube of three heavy wall tubing. And uh, got, got, got it put together. Front axle is out of a 55 Ford pickup. Modified it to fit the truck, fit the frame. Uh, steering box is out of a 49 Ford pickup. And uh, the rear end is out of a 1990 Crown Victoria. It's a 8.8. .8. Got that fixed. I had to narrow the bed three inches to fit the rear end, clear the tires, and then I shortened the bed 18 inches and uh, got it down to where it looked a lot better. Is that your fuel tank right there? What's that? Is that the fuel tank right there? Yes, it is. Home built. Uh, chop, chop the top four inches on it. And this this frame, I, uh, the rear of the frame, I kicked it up 15 inches to help get the back of the truck down. Zed it, zed it 15 inches. And uh, let's go around and talk about the motor. Well, I originally had a. 351 Ford sitting in the rails that I was going to use, but I wanted to put a tunnel ram on it and uh, went out to the Wichita swap meet. And a guy I know deals in Ford stuff, I went to him and told him I was looking for a tunnel ram for a 351 small block. And he said, You probably ain't going to find one. He said, They're very, very, very scarce if you can, if you can even find one. And, uh, but he said they, they, you can get them for 302s, but they make a spacer kit, and the spacer kit was like $300. So before the day was over, I had this tunnel ram for a small block Chevrolet, and I had this 350, a uh, pretty good old motor. And uh, so I just come home, and I bought a, a cam kit uh, for the small block, and put it in there and took the 351 out and put a 350 in it. Got a 350 turbo behind it and uh, got it in there. That's what I ended up using. And uh, got a Speedway kit, these, these header kits out of Speedway. Got it put together. And had a friend of mine over at Parsons, Rod, uh, Rod Blackburn, I had him make me a set of mufflers to put in it and he put them in there and oh so it. yeah there is mufflers inside yes, yeah there is mufflers in there cool and in fact that's what that center flange is right there is the end of the muffler right and uh, he made them turnouts for me extended it out a little bit and made those turnouts and I really like it 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 turned out great how long did it take you to build this well a lot longer than it could have because there was times I'd work on it a lot and then I'd get away from it for a month or well, so. Well you had to take you a had break. To put uh, food on the table and yeah. have a job like I do. So Yeah, exactly. So. so anyway. What's the headlights off of? Uh, they're just aftermarket speedway headlights. And uh, the grill shell is thirty four to thirty six international. Uh, a friend of mine had a international pickup and he wanted a 32 grill shell and when we were out there at the Wichita swap meet uh, we found him a 32 grill shell and I ended up getting this one so put it on there and uh, I wanted one of these Dodge Rams to put on it and I couldn't find an original one well then I finally figured out the original ones are spring-loaded 
so they go down down about that far and I didn't have that kind of room and I got to got on the internet and I got to looking and uh, Chrome Shop Mafia had these so I went over and got one and put on it now I've got Chevy Ford Dodge and International on it so it's cool kind of a mixed breed <laughs> cool. I did not I did not know them was spring loaded I didn't either Cole huh. uh, I got to visiting with a guy that had one and got to looking at it and yeah yeah, they're, they're, the original ones are spring-loaded, and they stick down well probably that far, but the, if you hit them, they'll break over. Huh. So. Well, let's go inside the, the cab. In the cab? Okay. So what's the dash? The dash is the original dash, other than I filled it. It was... It was. It originally had a oblong gauges in it, mm -hmm. so I filled that and I bought these aftermarket gauges and put in it. And uh, I like his sign. You can't fix stupid. The shifter is a uh, low car. Got in. Had to modify it a little bit. That that transmission hump is actually out of a '68 Nova. A guy I know that builds race cars had that laying in his in his uh, junk pile out behind his shop and he gave it to him and I brought it home and modified it and huh. put it in there for my transmission. Right? Boy, them's the little bitty old windshield wipers. I'm sorry? I said them's the little old windshield wipers. Yeah, yes they are. Like that guy on TV on that commercial, they're short. <laughs> yeah, they're real short. <laughs> and that cup holder, I just made that cup holder out of some stuff I had here in the shop. Huh. That's pretty neat. Now I know people's going to ask. We had this on an earlier video the, when it was in the showroom, you but what? you caught. I said this was in the showroom on yeah. an earlier video. Yeah. And I had somebody come in there and ask me the possum killer. How many possums have you killed going down the road? Well, there you go. Got a story. And oh, those seats come out of a. They're salvage yard seats. They come out of a Ford Escort, maybe. I just walked around over there. They let me walk around over there till I found something I liked. And well, I got those and brought them home, built the stands for them, got them in there. Right. Uh, you see her headrest? <laughs> oh my, I didn't even notice that. <laughs> if I knew that rat would have been up there, I would have jumped out of that cab. I hate rats. Uh, all right. And uh, so. Anyway, we were coming home from Miami one night. We've yep. been to a cruise night down there, and I come over a hill down there south of town, uh, down there about Bob Roark's place. Yeah. And it was pretty well dark, and boy, I mean, whoop, whoop, I seen something move in front of us. And I told my wife, I said, well, we get home, I'm gonna clean up the underneath of this truck, because I figured it ran over a possum. Got home, and there wasn't nothing under it. So we come to the conclusion it was probably an armadillo. Armadillo, oh man, yeah. them things are thick so, around here. Anyway, didn't think armadillo sounded so cool, so we put that on there. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. Yeah. I like it. All right. Anyway, that's the story on that. That's the possum killer. And then we found a, had a 46 license plate, so we painted it and put it on there. Right. And got it registered. And this is street legal. Now what about this plate you was telling me? The what? What about this plate you was telling me? A friend of mine made that for me. I'll be darned. He punched all the louvers and all. Now that's stuff. copper, isn't it? Is that look, looks copper? Uh, no, it ain't. It kind of looked copper. Yeah, yeah. It, it's some process he does. Uh, that panel up there with that thermometer. Yeah. He made it too, and as you walk by it, it, it kind of changes color. Oh really? Yeah, I don't know what he's processing. Well, I noticed is. when I was walking past this that right if here. If you look right here, it almost looks like flame. Yep, it does. Hmm. I'll be darned. Well, it's I, quite I a don't truck. Know how he does it, and huh. he just—I told him kind of what I'd like to have, and he said, "All right, we'll we'll make you up something." Right. So.
All right, we're back from the shop. Uh, had a pretty good little tour around the shop today. And uh, what you think of that rat rod? Uh, new build it, you know. We was talking about, you know, when, he, when you chop that thing, about blending it in, yeah. you know, and everything. And he was telling me a little bit about the paint. Uh, tell us about the paint. Well, I went to one place and what they wanted for the paint, I thought was a little more than I wanted to spend. So. Being an old tight rod, I guess, I don't know, but I ended up going to a, a hardware store and they had paint in there and I actually bought uh, two different colors of paint, some green and some black, and I just mixed them together and matched them up to what some of the original paint was on the old truck. Sprayed it on there, it worked for me and it was a lot less money. And some guy told you to, to you ought to paint the whole thing and uh, with the crack on the door and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah. And he just clear coated it. Man, it looks sharp. I mean, when you're standing over the top of it, I mean, it, it's really sharp. And then your tailgate deal yeah. uh, that, that your buddy made. Yeah. Pretty sharp looking stuff, you know, so. Uh, but anyway, uh, had a good time at the shop. Uh, you won a lot of trophies, man. I, I feel like oh, trophies. There's a lot of trophies. I think you got more trophies than Bernie's got. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I thought Bernie had a lot of trophies on his wall. But I think he got him beat. Yeah, I don't know. Could be. Yeah, I don't know. And uh, but uh, you was telling me a story. I don't know if you want to talk about it or not. But you were telling me a story about you was sick or something. I'd had my shoulder. Had your shoulder, shoulder, and your wife took him. Yeah, we went to. Actually, we went to uh, Gerard. We'd never been up there to that car show, and we decided we wanted to go. And she drove up there, and, and uh, they got us in there and got us parked. And they, uh, oh, we went off and done some stuff and come back. And then later, I, there's some other stuff come in, cars and tractors and stuff. So I was off looking at that stuff, and they uh, got. Uh, Ready to, I, I got back and we said for admission, so they called up for the, up for the awards and not thinking anything about it, I just went up there. And the guy that was giving away the awards said that he started talking and he said, I've been talking to this lady about this old truck and one thing and another. Anyway, he ended up calling us. I told her, I said, well, just go on up there and get it. So she went up there and got it, she brought it back. And, uh, she showed it to me, it was a plaque, and I had to laugh because kind of an unusual one, I, I thought, and it said most unique. <laughs> <laughs> so, got a good laugh out of that, and she had a good time, and we, we had a good, good time up there that day. And you've seen, also, you've seen the possum killer uh, rat rod in here on video before on my earlier podcast. Uh, tell us how you came up with that name. Well, we'd been down to Miami at a cruise night, and I, I did. I wanted something on the doors, but I wasn't real sure what I wanted. I was, whatever I put on there, I wanted it to look old. And we come over a hill down south of town, and I ran over something, and uh, thinking it was a possum. And uh, I told my wife, I said, "Before we get home, I'm going to have some cleaning to do in this truck. Get it off there while it's fresh." Got home there wasn't anything. Well, I got that her book. So we figured I must have ran over an armadillo. Because it was like running over a rock. It was close, possum on a half shell. Well, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so anyway, I thought, well, we're just going to call this thing possum killer. I had to, you know, the, the armadillo just didn't sound redneck enough, I guess. And that's what we had put on it. So that's, that's how that came about. I gotta tell you a story that made me think of a story talking about possum. I took and uh, me and the wife one night, we went to uh, over west here to a pool one night at uh, Mount Valley. Yeah. And I had uh, my mini rod and I had my uh, all dressed in red garden tractor sitting on there. And we loaded up to come home. Well, the main bridge is out over by all swing yeah. you know, on the highway. Yeah. And we were coming back, you know, and. I don't remember running over anything. I mean, we took part gravel and we went slow, you know, from, you know, the truck and 
try to hit tractors on it. Didn't want to throw rocks back here, you know. And we went pretty slow. And I don't ever remember hitting nothing uh -huh. or anything. Well, the next morning, I didn't unload that night. I, I went out the next morning to unload. And I think we had a pull the next day or something. I went out there and I had possum hair, possum hide, and partial guts. Yeah, that's what I thought on my truck too. On the <laughs> tractor, sitting on the trail. Wow. Now, I don't know how it got there. I have no idea. It yeah. wasn't on there when I left, but it was on there. So I don't know if I ran over a possum and I throwed him up on the trailer or what, but man, it was a mystery. It was just a mystery. I don't yeah, know yeah you would have thought if you had hit him something, you would Hell, he might have been hurt something. He might have had wings and he flew out of the sky. <laughs> Who knows? That's you know, our so. Yeah, so, one of them deals. Oh, yeah. Well, anything else we missed tonight? Uh, not that I know of. So I had a good time at the shop, yep. checking out the, yeah, everything at the shop. So, so uh, thanks for coming, man, yes, and uh, being with me today and sharing the table. Uh, next week's podcast, we're going to have Justin Howard. He's a big tractor puller and truck puller. I uh, got some pretty good videos to add to the podcast for that. Uh, a lot of people know Justin. Uh, he's from the Show Me State over there in Missouri. Looking forward to hear his story. So with that said, uh, thanks for watching. See you next week and keep it between the lines.